What's going on YouTube? So I'm kind of doing something a little different today. Um, you know, I've had some people ask me, what kind of games do you like? Because since we're on the subject of games lately, what it has been the last few videos, I'm going to give you guys my top five favorite games. And this ain't all time, but just out of my collection that I got so far that I play on a consistent basis. So I think um, these are games that are also pretty underrated in my opinion, and didn't get the credit they deserve. And uh, it's just, these are just a really good experience. You know, you guys kind of know how I feel about games nowadays, that a lot of them are kind of just boring and repetitive. But I am going to give now the positive side. If I had to pick a game to start with, now this is, like I said, in no particular order, but if I had to pick one game that is one of the most criminally underrated games in this generation... It's this game right here, Days Gone. Days Gone is easily one of the most underrated games I've ever seen. Do you know IGN only gave this game a 6 out of 10, but they'll give a garbage game like The Last of Us Part 2 a 10 out of 10? That just goes to show you an IGN's a paid reviewer. I'm sorry, I don't listen to the, them reviews. I know that everybody's about reviews nowadays, but honestly, what I like so much about this game, and there's no spoilers... But the story in this game, and I know I talk about the story not being the main thing in the game, but a story like this I have to mention because you play as this very likable character, Deacon St. John, and he's got a buddy named Boozer and has a wife named Sarah, and there's obviously a lot more people you meet along the way. But you, the game has you believing that, that uh, Deacon St. John's wife, Sarah, is dead. But the, it always keeps you on the edge of your seat by saying she might be alive. Again, I'm not going to tell you whether she is or not. It's I don't want to spoil it. But the other thing I like about Days Gone is the fact just the, the, the weapons are excellent. They respond real well. You have a good selection, good upgrades. You have hordes of zombies you literally can fight, like the Sawmill Horde where you're literally fighting hundreds if not thousands of zombies at a time. It gets very intense and it's very fun. And that's what I think is a good zombie game. A good zombie slasher where you can use guns and all different types of weapons and you can custom the customization and you can ride a bike and shoot zombies while you're riding. You can slide and the controls spawn, re, respawn very well rather. It's just a really good experience. If you have not played this game, you really should give it a try. Again, it's days gone. It's just a really, really good, fun experience. Well, my next underrated game, I know this is technically a last-gen, like, PS3 version, but the original Dead Island series, not Dead Island 2, I'll get to that another day, but Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide, while we're on the subject of zombies. The reason I think that one is underrated is because at the time when it originally came out, it really nobody talked about it. Nobody really started talking about it until Dead Island 2 really came about, in my opinion. At least what I've heard. Like I said, I'm not on the internet much looking at what people look up. But the reason I liked Dead Island so well is the story was kind of meh. You know, it was kind of bland. But what I liked about Dead Island so well is that all four of those different characters, five actually, because there was a DLC where you could play as Ryder, um... But, like, Sam B., he was an expert at blunt weapons. There was another one, uh, Logan, he was, a, like, a knife weapons expert. And then there was another one where it was a throw weapon. And then there was another guy or another girl that was a uh, weapons expert. You know what I mean? Like, firearms. So, every character had their own unique abilities on the skill level. And the fact that I liked it so well is because there was endless opportunities if you wanted to do 100 percent game completions you you will get lost in this game for days upon days if not months i mean it is really a good time consumer it's one of the few games that i will say deep silver actually did a really good job with the help of Techland. but anyway so yeah just the map exploration you got the resort then you're in this really low poverty city that's kind of run by gangs and thugs and and then you go into the jungle and then the laboratory island i mean it's just and all different types of zombies you know that's what i liked about it like you could take this is kind of back off subject back up here a second but 
One thing I liked about Dead Island so well is the fact that you could take an ordinary weapon like a sledgehammer and turn it into a magic wand that could make a thug fly all the way across the map. I mean, not literally, but you know what I mean. That just the, the customization and the different things you could do to weapons. I mean, it was just endless. It was endless. That's why I kept going back to Dead Island so long for a while because it was just fun to start over and go through the entire game again. And the fact that you could start over again and not lose any of your progress and continue to level up, I also like that. So, yeah, Dead Island. Dead Island Riptide was good. It wasn't as good as the original, but it was still good, you know. So, yes, that's another game that I think is underrated. If you haven't played the original Dead Island, I'm assuming if you're younger, you probably haven't, but... Luckily, they have the Definitive Edition, which is good. I still like the original one better on PS3. But, pick it up. It's good. And now, I know we're still on Zombies, but another one. This is one that I haven't seen up till recently. And Zombie Army Dead War 4, or Dead Zombie Army 4 Dead War, whatever, how you pronounce it. But I haven't beaten this game yet. But this is another zombie game that is just fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like I said, the story, not real good, but, you know, it's okay. You know what I mean? But the weapons respond real well. Um, <clears throat> and so far what I'm seeing, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a decent story, you know. But just the fact that, you know, if you get, like, you can keep getting more points by killing more zombies in a row. Like, you know... I think the highest I've gotten is like 85 in a row, you know, where it gives you a certain amount of time before you can kill another zombie. I mean, anybody that's played this game know what I'm talking about, but the weapon customization is good. You know, again, it, it, it's a lot like, it kind of reminds me a lot of Days Gone. I mean, they're almost similar without the good story, pretty much. So that's another one. Pick it up. If you haven't, again, I'll show it to you. This is what it looks like. To me, this is a very another under, underrated game that I see not many people talking about. And believe it or not, here's one that I actually, it's kind of mindless fun, but it's just fun in general. And it's this thing, Man Eater. <laughs> what I like about this game is just the, how different it is. How you can actually be a shark, and I know it sounds stupid at first, but... The fact that you can custom, I mean, the customizations, I mean, look at what you can do to your shark on this. You can make it to where it's full of bone and make it have electric shocks and, you know, toxic, you know, toxic shock or whatever. Just a, the, another good game where the web or the customization of the shark, where you level up from a, a little bitty one to a mega shark and pretty much you get to the point where almost nothing can stop you and the different enemies you can do, you know, like taking on an orca and then taking on a sperm whale. I mean, just really, really, really cool. And then it's got a really cool DLC called the truth quest that, you know, you can take on these mutant kind of animals and it's just really, really mindless fun, but it's really good. I definitely would recommend man eater. And plus the, you know, another game where the exploration is beautiful. The map looks good. And just got to give it to these guys. This tripwire and, again, Deep Silver, believe it or not. But as you, if you guys know, I'm not the biggest fan of Deep Silver. I mean, this is the company that made Ride to Hell Retribution. So, But anyway, getting off that subject, that's another game. So that's four that I've listed so far that I think are really good. So check them out. And believe it or not, my final for the top five that I think is very underrated. Now, this is technically... A very old game, but it got remastered, and it looks good, and <laughs> it's this one. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. That was one of my first ever PlayStation 2 games, and it was really, really fun at that time, and it's even more fun now with newer graphics. So the game is exactly the same, and like I said, the adventure of it, is just good, and if you play Battle for Bikini Bottom, you know what it means. And I know people are gonna say a grown man playing a SpongeBob game. Well, listen, play it. Don't knock it until you try it. It's like the spam commercial. Don't knock it until you try it. It's just a good adventure. Like I said, endless things to do, collectibles you can do, Diff very cool, unique level designs, different abilities that Patrick and SpongeBob and Sandy can do, and. 
it's just a good experience. It's just really, really fun. Now, I did want to make an honorable mention here because this one just came out, Cosmic Shake. And I haven't played much of it, but this is also a pretty fun game, too. I would check this out. So there you have it, guys. That's my, well, technically six. But <laughs> I think six games that you should really give a fair shake to. Don't, I mean, it seems like nowadays, like I said, most gamers are just playing what's popular. I mean, yeah, I mean, I like Red Dead Redemption, too. I like Minecraft. You know, I like God of War. I like, um... In my opinion, The Last of Us is one of the most overrated trash games I've ever played. And it's not even that good. I mean, Days Gone story. You want to talk about story, you know, because everybody's talking about a story. Days Gone story, if you've never played that game, that story kicks The Last of Us upside down the other. Just kicks it right in the ass. So, check them out, guys. That's my top five underrated games that I've played so far. And give me a give me a shout out. If you guys think of a game that you think I should try, I'm open for it. Cause like I said, I haven't I haven't really beaten every game obviously that I've got, but give a shout out. We'll take um uh, anyway, jibber jabber. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um still going to my rehab cardiac rehab doing well and um i'll just keep you guys posted soon